Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just, just a few announcements here. Um, first of all, I want to thank Ms. Peggy for helping me out, but um, they placed some flowers. These were placed in uh, memory of Ms. Flo McCoy, so the um, family wanted to share that with us, so I just wanted y'all to acknowledge what they have done. And I thank you all, take that opportunity to thank you all for the support that you gave to her. It is, a, it is an end of an era, and a, a wonderful, wonderful time in this church's history, and we honor her memory and thank God for, for her ministry here. Um, also, uh, in light of Easter coming, which is just a few weeks away, believe it or not, we're coming. Um, I'm working, uh, Lindsay and I are working on putting a display here that is going to show some artwork. We're going to dress up the sanctuary a little bit for Easter. So if you are an artsy type, um, doesn't have to be a picture. It can be whatever handicraft you want to do. But we'd like to show what Jesus means to you. So if you have something in that regard, we'd love to display it up here so people can see it uh, during the Easter season. I believe it just enhances um, our appreciation of what Easter means to everybody. So please let me know or let Lindsay know. Wave at everybody to the moon. Right there. To, to involve, I want to involve you. Don't think, well, I can't do anything. I, I, I just want to involve as many people as possible in the worship of the church because I think that we all have something to contribute, and I think that we should. If you heard my sermon yesterday at the funeral, well, the song goes on, and it goes on in our creativity. So I pray that you will take advantage of that as you can. Thank you so much. And also, this week, we'll have Men's Fellowship on March 9th, Thursday, and um, Good morning. Good morning. Um, just wanted to make a couple of announcements. Um, first off, this coming Saturday, um, we will be taking the youth group to Winter Jam. We're going to be leaving at about 12.30. I know that seems a little early, but we are going to try and get there, get a good place in line, and we're going to have a devotion and everything planned for today. Um, so if you're interested, please let us know. Um, also, I haven't got to thank you yet. We just finished getting in um, some donations, but I want to thank everybody that was able to come out and support us at our Valentine's banquet the other week. We really do appreciate everybody that comes out and supports us. Um, it means a lot to us and the kids. The kids see it and they appreciate it as well. Thank you all. And next Sunday will be Women's Ministry Day. Uh, in support of them, all women are asked to wear purple, but also men as well. Uh, it's not the most manly color, but it's just one day, so maybe we can handle that. Uh, with that, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I want to thank you for this day. Allow us to come to your house once again to join together as your body, as your temple, to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Have your will and have your way throughout this service, but also in our lives, in our individual lives, as we leave today. Continue to work and to move in what you have planned for us and for this church. To be all that you have called us to be beyond ourselves. In your holy name I pray. Amen.
here this morning and as we travel through this life serving the Lord, the songwriter put it in a song that I love dearly. Jesus, hold my hand. How can we make it without the Lord? Amen. Let's sing that this morning. We worship in the house of God.
else because I, I did forget. Uh, <coughs> April 22nd, we'll be having the PHC Hall, and not next week, but the week after, I will have some more details about that, so it's always a good time, fellowship, and fun, <coughs> have good, clean fun, and do we have any prayer requests? I want to thank you once again for coming to your house to lift up our needs before one another, but more importantly, before you, to give back to serve you as your people, as your children, to pray for others, our fellow church members, our fellow sons and daughters of you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for each and every need that was mentioned, those that may have been forgotten, those that were acknowledged by uplifting of the hand. They're in your hands today. I pray, Holy God, that we fully and truly give them to you. And we mention them today we continue to uplift, continue to bring them to you before your throne, but that your Holy Spirit will have its work in this way, however you see fit, to prepare our hearts for what you have in store for these needs and for these requests. I pray, Holy God, that you continue to work and to move in your holy name and pray.
too, brother. Enjoy these nice, beautiful flowers, and especially the one here. It's a lot. It's a real flower too. It's beautiful. We thank God for it. But uh, for the pastor comes to minister this morning, I, I do want to mention that I, I want to do a song uh, in remembering this flow. I wasn't privileged to work here all the years that I see in Dennis minister here, but that's great. But uh, I did work with a little while in Providence, and uh, it was good to have somebody that knew how to play music. And not that I never did, I always had great musicians, but uh, I never seen anyone like her. Just like she was talking yesterday, she sat there and played. It was on her heart and her mind. She knew it. That have music. She could play all over that keyboard and look all over. She tell you whoever everybody was in the house. <laughs> Great is that. But I, I want to sing it this song this morning. Uh, we'll scare her again when they go ahead, but take that.
Beverly would like to announce to the parents what's upcoming. Just wanted to let y'all know we're starting a new sermon unit called Think About It. And it's based off of Romans 12 too. Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Mm -hmm. And then you will be able to test what God wants for you. Mm -hmm. And you will agree that what He wants is right. Mm -hmm. and we've got a lot of stuff coming at us as grown-ups. Kids do too. And so we're going to be working on ways that we can think about what's true, what's right, and what's best. Amen. So we're going to take a break next week to we have Women's Ministries Day. If your kids are ready, I'll go ahead and take a break next week. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Beverly. Good, relevant topic. Um, I want to thank um, Pastor Ben for, for filling in last week. It was a good and ministering service, and that's what we want. Um, Thank God we were we were at um, Bizzle Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church, and it was a, it was a, it was a tough weekend. It was a busy weekend. It was a tough weekend. But can I tell you, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. You want to praise the Lord, or can I? Yeah. Let me do it. Okay, thank you. Because it's not my family; it's, it's her family. It's my family. I'm married, but but um, I, I, I still like it is is relevant. I was going to say it on Sunday nights. But uh, Sunday night, we, we take time to pray, and I've told them, I've told them, and I truly believe this, that prayer time is a time when you roll up your sleeves and say, let's get to work. It's not pretty, it's not glorious, but it gets the job done. Sitting in a worship pew is for worship. That's not for prayer. This is a part of the battle, but let me tell you, you want to know the battle's enjoying? You start fighting the devil. You start calling out the sin and iniquity and unrighteousness. You start repenting like what happened at Asbury. The devil notices. And God blesses. The battle is enjoined. And it was, I struggled all weekend long. It was just, it was so tough. I had no idea what was going on. I thought it was just me struggling to get all my thoughts together. But um, uh, it was working beyond my understanding. Uncle Phil was, was showed me a, a conversion story that, that uh, was really, really powerful. And, and uh, came about because somebody brought and said, you know, are you a Christian? No, actually, why aren't you a Christian? Not are you? Why aren't you one? I thought that was really good. That's a really good question. Why aren't you one? This is the truth. So why aren't you one? Uh, and that I think that worked on him. He watched it several times even after we did, and obviously it was because um, we met for dinner on Saturday. Saturday, and um, it seemed like an ordinary day. Felt like an ordinary day. Everything seemed ordinary except we were going to have barbecue. That was not ordinary. That was extraordinary. <laughs> But um, it seemed ordinary. And so I think some of you may be feeling the ordinariness or maybe the difficulty of life right now. I want you to understand, just because you feel this doesn't mean that's all that's going on. Just because you feel dead doesn't mean the spirit world is dead. God is at work. And we got, we got, a, we got a, a rumor, a report in, before we even say it, that um, someone we called out in prayer just weeks ago. We prayed right here. I said, pray for... Those you know need to know the Lord. And I don't know, I don't know other than by the Spirit of God. I got people that I know in my family that needs to be saved, but for some reason, one of Leah's cousins came to my mind. And um, we heard a rumor that day that on the way to the grocery store to pick up stuff. <laughs> that Jeremy said, was asked, Are you a Christian? He's not a liar. He's a straightforward kind of guy, construction worker. He's not really much about kidding. He said, well, no, I'm not. By the time they got to that grocery store, he was. <laughs> now, why did I call this man out of prayer? Why did that man come to me? Why on that day was he watching, Uncle Phil watching that video to, to talk about him? And we all kept it, we all kept it quiet because he's very private, very personal. And so we, we respected that. I was about to bust. I was sitting at the table and I was about to bust. We, you know, what are we going to say? We, we do all the chit chat. And it finally came up at the table. Somebody finally asked, Were you preaching? Did the Uncle Phil get you to preach? And I said, Yeah. And then Jeremy spoke up and says, Well, well, he needs a break because he led this whole sinner to the Lord. <laughs> His words, not mine. And then he just started breaking down and crying. You can talk to Leah. Jeremy's not exactly, he's tenderhearted, but that, that's not exactly something he does in front of people. But when the Lord touches your heart, I don't care who you are, something changes in you. And he began to cry, I began to cry, and the rest of the 
those, well, I won't say what denomination they're in, but they were not comfortable with that conversation. It got really quiet at the table, but I was rejoicing, and, and, and we just all rejoiced with him. So can I tell you, God is at work. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. God's at work. And even if you've been praying long, I don't know how long we've been praying for Jeremy. I didn't know neither of Aunt Jane's kids were going to come in because they're a different breed altogether. David came to know the Lord, and I'm thinking, wow, that was just, that blew my mind. And he and his wife, who was a Mormon, came to know the Lord, blew my mind. But Jeremy, still, I don't know how, how, how long has it been since David got saved, do you know? So over 10 years. Not quite 10, but close, close to 10 years. But on that day, one week ago almost, it was that day. You talk about a happy mama's heart, Hank Janney. She was happy. Both of them have been to church. You may or may not remember them. But I just want to rejoice in the Lord because, not just because it's our family. I want to hear if it's your family. I don't care. Thanks be to God. He is at work and we, we need Him. But I love when God interrupts our normal routines and lives to say, I am God. And I see and I do more than you can see. So praise be to God. God's at work. Let that encourage. Let that encourage your heart today. Because um, I know the devil would have you discouraged. I know the devil would have you thinking anything else other than the faithfulness and the trustworthiness of God. Um, I want you to turn with me to Numbers chapter 14. Now, I, I come to the scripture fully aware that I may not get through it. Fully aware. If I don't, I'll take care of it tonight. So don't worry about that. But I, I do believe God is at work. And we just want to obey God. I think that is a, a theme we can pick up on um, at, this, at this time of the service. God's at work. So when God's at work, you just say, yes, Lord. Yes. That's all you say. Yes, Lord. Nothing else. Just yes, Lord. So, we will look, and then we will see just where the Lord goes from here. Well, well let's, let's, um, let's go to um, just the first verse of chapter 14. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. And then we will um, then we'll pray. Numbers 14.1, Israel is at Kadesh Barnea. They are right on the very, very edge of the promised land. Um, it is geographically short distance, and they will actually be in the land God promised them. Um, the only problem is they've already sent out spies, and the spies came back and said, Oh man, it is a, it is a better land than we could even imagine. It is, it is gorgeous, it is beautiful, but it's got a bunch of people in it. They're hard people. They're big people. Strong cities. I just don't think we can take it. So, everything the Lord had said was true. Land flow with milk and honey. He never said there wasn't people there. In fact, He said, there's Canaanites, there's Hittites, there's Hivites, and I ain't going to all those ites, but you know there's a bunch of ites when He starts listening. He said they were there. So, <laughs> nothing they found out was different than what God had already said. But obviously, they're intentions and their understanding of what it would be was not the same as what God had said. So, in light of that background, verse 1, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and praised. No, that's not. They cried. They cried praises and thank you. No. They wept that night. They wept all night long. Why did they weep all night long? The whole children of Israel, in verse 2, complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation, they said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, the land of our slavery, the land of our bondage, the land of where they sacrificed our firstborn sons to a man's, to a man's pride. Let's go there and die. If only we had died in the wilderness. God Almighty, this passage is about when you say amen. God, help us to understand the power of our words, the power of our heart, and of our intentions. Because there is a great listening ear who is involved in our lives and listens to us and what we want, God have mercy on us. 
you give to us so often and more often than we want to think. So, oh God, I pray through your words, tenderize our hearts, orient our vision, that Jesus, we may understand the goodness of God and we may understand you are worth our trust. And in saying that, dear Father, may your amen be in line with the, what we truly desire and what you have ordained for us. May that be true for all this congregation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The complaints continued in verse 3 and 4. Why has the Lord brought us to this land? This scripture was just hard for me to, um, to look at it beyond just the state of who they were. You brought them from Egypt miraculously, absolutely miraculously. They've loaded you down with gold, silver, and goods that are so generous, everybody's well off in some regards. He's fed you with manna from heaven. Water keeps coming from rocks to handle all the sheep, all the goats, all the cattle, everything that you have, every man, woman, and child. Nobody's thirsting to death. Nobody's dying from starvation. And you've been wandering around in a desert. You see God's presence come down on the mountain. It shakes the entire environment around you. It is so terrifying. You say, God, please speak to Moses because we cannot stand your glory. It is so magnificent. They receive a covenant from God and they agree to that covenant. They are promised a land and God delivers them to that land. God said, I will bring you to the land and I will give it to you. That is His promise. They get to the land and they see the struggle. They see the problems. They see it's not going to be handed on a silver platter. They see they're not just a red carpet. It's not going to be rolled out for them. They just walk right in. In other words, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. Dangerous. Deadly even. And so their fear starts talking over their faith. Anybody knows what that's like? We all do, let's be honest. We all say, man, I love faith, I love God, I trust God, until life throws us a curveball. Then our faith is tested. And if we're honest, fear overcomes that faith, and we, we begin talking out of our head, talking out of our spirit, talking out of our, of our spiritual sense. Fear is either talking in this congregation or laziness is. I don't know. Do you expect God to hand you the blessings and you don't do anything but just sit there and receive them? Well, I look at the 21st century church and that looks like what we're doing. We're sitting right here, lifting up our hands, saying, God, what is it pouring out? But I ain't going across the street to do nothing for you. So what are we doing? God, you're going to save the world and I'm watching you while you do it. And we wonder why the world's not saved yet. So I don't know what is true of this congregation. I don't know what, what may be analogous in our own experience, but I know this is not faith. This is not, I trust you, God, and I'm right on the cusp of what you have for me. I know some have, have, have recently seen um, a blockbuster now. Hallelujah, praise God. A spiritual movie that is actually getting some attention. Um, it's about a revival that took place in California. There has been revival in California. I know it's hard to believe now. But there has been revival in California. A great revival. Signs and wonders following kind of revival. But the story that is told there is about one of its main proponents fell away from God. Went deep, dark in the sin. And it was only by the end of his life that he reconciled to God and that he, he reconciled to his fellow believers his right right with God. Can I tell you? This battle doesn't stop the time you say, God, I'm going to follow you. It's going to go with you day after day, week after week, until you have received all the promises God has for you and you do all the work that He has called you to do. This is a serious time. It is not a time to be resting on our laurels. It is not a time to say, oh, God's God. It's not a time to let things go as they are. I don't know about you, but the status quo stinks. We need God to move. And I'm telling you, I'm not just talking about Pentecostals. I don't know any denomination 
except maybe the most liberal and the most secular that are not saying, God, please move in our churches again. I sit in prayer breakfast just Friday morning with a bunch of Baptist, Presbyterians, and Methodists. Methodist ministers preaching. Man, there's amens going out all over that place. I'm thinking, who turned this into a Pentecostal gathering? It's not a Pentecostal gathering. It's a hungry people for God gathering. And when you're hungry for God, God notices and He responds. When you take God at His word and stop having another agenda than Him, then something happens. God listens to our words. The devil, the first thing he says to you, God doesn't hear me. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. The difficult part about this passage to me is God says amen sometimes to our words. Now, now the literal words are not going to be there. You know what amen means? It means truth. It means so be. This is the truth. This is what I accept. This is the way it is. By the end of the story, God amens. This is what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the way it's going to be. Our words and our intentions matter. They blame the Lord for their trouble. Why has the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the sword? That our wives and our children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? You want to know how serious this is? A New Testament analogy to this is it says you trample the blood of Jesus Christ under your feet. You know what it says about those people? There's no sacrifice left for them. If Jesus is not good enough, you're in a world of hurt. There's no other Savior. There's no other way. You are lost Worse than if you'd never known because you didn't know. It's, it's exactly analogous to that. They said, Lord, don't care if you brought me out. Lord, I don't care if you kept me safe. Lord, I don't care that you fed me. Lord, I don't care about you showed yourself to me. I don't care about any of those things. You have determined evil for me. That's fear. It's not faith. Well, people don't talk like that. Who do you blame when you get afraid? You blame your lack of faith? Probably not. I know I don't. I start blaming God. God, why'd you let this happen? So I'm blaming him for my lack of trust, my lack of faith, and my words God has to correct. And I thank God that he does. He said, they said, let us select a leader. And let's go back to Egypt. You know how the New Testament captures that? There's going to be people that look for preachers that tell them what they want to hear instead of what God has said. They will find them. They always do. In fact, we've got a, a whole system at work right now. Well, if you're going to believe anybody, you'll probably believe even a politician before you will a preacher. That's the way it is. Because they, they don't speak for God anymore. I hear from God myself. Well, that's probably another sermon coming up in a couple of weeks because Cora and them thought that too. God chooses. The Bible says God chooses what He wants people to hear. And it's not just through the Word. It is through human preachers. It's through human teachers. It's through apostles. And if we don't listen to them, God have mercy on us and think we can work out our own salvation our own way. It's not God's economy. It's not the way God works. They decided, let us select a leader. Because Moses, we don't want him. Aaron, don't want him. Joshua, you stay with him. Caleb, you can have him too. We're going to choose our own leader. These words, they're important. Some of you have, have, have talked to me. I know Miss Joyce's heart has been broken for a church because they don't want to do God's will anymore. They just want to have their own way. Can I tell you, God hears. You say, well, the devil's messing up that church. Well, yeah, you can blame him ultimately, but sometimes it's people's hearts. This is what they want, and they get it. And they really don't care who it hurts as long as it's what they want. And I say, God, have mercy on us. God, give us a humble heart again that what we speak out here, God said, every idle word matters. Every conversation matters to God. It matters to Him that when we speak it out to each other or speak it out to God, we better be ready for God to say amen to it. And if it's, you can't think, you don't want Him to say amen to it, then don't let it come out of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's in there. Don't let it out. Repent of it. 
So these were crazy people, right? What a bunch of crazy, misunderstanding people. They are not thankful for anything that God has done for them. So we'd say they're not very smart, right? Could we, could we, could we amen that? Not very smart? Well, our culture is not really in a good place either. I found, a, I found an example of exactly where our culture is. And I want to I show you two little TikTok clips. I, I am no TikTok. Not at all. Just ask Congress. As soon as he's going to show me something, a frown comes over my face. Because we've gone from short attention spans that last, what, 10 minutes? Now it's about 30 seconds. Because it's not even entertainment anymore. It's amusement. Because I don't know how you can be entertained in even five seconds. How can you? That's just an amusement. That's just a thing. And move on to the next thing. That's all you're doing. You're doing that for half an hour. So you're, you're he he like a hyena. But it's all you're doing is amusing yourself. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to our culture. I, I, I truly am. But, but here's where we are. There's, there's this one TikTok. Let's, let's see his work. Some of you will appreciate this more than others. Just know your pastor loves you. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I want you to look at what this guy's doing. This is art on TikTok. That's not a photograph. That is a drawing. That was a hundred and fifty hours worth of work. Wow. It's art. You gotta create, you gotta make something beautiful. I, I would be, you know, a lot of people be fine draw a stick figure. Let it fall in the mud. Hit. You got gotcha. you. That's that's beautiful. I know it's a tiger. I told you, Robbie, I told you. <laughs> that is beautiful. I think that reflects God. 146,000 people saw that in America. He's an Italian artist, but 140, I, I guess I say around the world. Saw that. Good job. Good job. 83 million people <laughs> saw this. Of our culture 
revealed, it'll depress you like nothing else. There are way too many duck faces and a whole lot of nothing going on in America. So that's a concern. And that's where Connor's had something on his heart, and I, I, think, it's, I think it's appropriate. God's listening. Our culture is dying. Yes, come on now. Who brought us life? It was Jesus. Amen. Who made us aspire for greatness? That was Jesus. And you can look at every, you can look at every, at every part of society. Jesus has an effect. Every part of it. I mentioned yesterday one of, the, one of the songs that I sang in public school. I can't believe this is one of the greatest, greatest pieces of music ever written was Handel's Messiah. And he put all of his skill, all of his talent, all of his creativity into saying the Lord God Almighty reigns. And it's greatest. And now we've got rap. Sorry. It's just the truth. We are in trouble. Because God's amening some things that we better say, God have mercy on. We are in the midst, and I know I'm talking through you because you're the church, and I'm praying, but I'm, I want you to understand how serious we are. Our culture is dying. Only Jesus can save. Right. Only Jesus can save. And this revival is not happening among the seniors. Preachers aren't being embroiled in revival. Why? You've seen the mountain. You've been delivered from Egypt. Man has come down from heaven for you. You've seen the signs. You've seen the wonders. I don't need to do one more thing for you, for you to get down on your knees, lift up your hands, and say, God, I am yours for life. These young people who have grown up in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation, God said, I will show you who I am. They're hurting. Jesus is healing. They're questioning. God is answering. They're hungering. And God is sending. That's what we want God to say amen to. That's what he, we want him to say. So let it be. Let it happen. So I'm going to turn this over to Pastor. I told you I wouldn't get finished. So you have to come back tonight to, to, for this finishing. But I think this is the proper occasion for Connor to share his heart. And then we will, we will join in prayer together. Young people are getting away from the Lord. Young people are getting away from the church. But let me tell you something. It's worse than we even let on. We can read about it. We can see it on TV. But until you are around it, you don't understand. We have artists that are saying, give me five minutes and I'll bring these young people right here to show them what it's like to worship Satan. We might look at the Super Bowl halftime show. We might say that it's nothing. It's just somebody going up there. It's just somebody singing. Let me tell you something. Why don't you go and look at the details of it and see what it's showing. Go look at the details and see what they're trying to let on, what they're trying to teach our young people. But let me tell you something. I found it very ironic with that all this going on that the Lord said, Satan, you want to try and do this? Look what I can do. There's revival going on everywhere. The Lord's not just touching us adults. They're touching our young people. I told Pastor that the Lord is eating away at me right now and what I feel like we need to do, even if your kids think they're too old, I don't really care right now. Get your kids and bring them up here, and we need to pray over them. Yeah. I sent Pastor Ben downstairs. He's getting our babies. He's getting our children's church. We have our teens in here. I want all of them and the parents up here. We pray for our own here, which is appropriate. But as we continue to pray, we pray for our neighbors. God, there's kids all around me in the neighborhood. There's, there's a school. It's right here, God. The devil goes to school too, Father. So we pray for your grace. Dear God, they are beside by no accident the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let the holiness of this place infiltrate that place. Let, dear God, your goodness spill over there, my God. And in fact, to all our communities, to all those around us, dear Father. Father, there was a time when we all looked around. We looked out for each other. We cared for one another. We cared about the behavior, not only of our own children, but of others. And so, Father, now we're told to just stay in your lane. Don't bother anybody else, but dear God, our communities are worse off. Our city is worse off. And kids and adults.
those who struggle, many dying long before they should because they're looking for the eternal in something that's physical and it's killing them. Fentanyl is just one, one prong of that many pronged attack by Satan to promise what he can't deliver. And that's peace and that's joy and wholeness in Jesus. So Father, I pray for our communities that we are a part of. Dear Father, let us be salt, let us be light, and let their names be on our hearts, dear God. As you just reminded me with Jeremy, I am not blood related to him, but you care for him more than I could ever imagine. So I should call out his name. I should call out others' name. I should pray for many others, dear God, not just mine, or not just those I'm familiar with, because this is your world. So, Father, we seek you as a church, and we seek for you to bring revival here amongst those that need it the worst. That, Father, we may all celebrate together, not just some, but all, in the goodness and the glory of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue meditating, Brother Harry has a testimony. Lord, I lay something on my heart. As we know, the devil is on the attack. He's been on attack in my family. Two weeks ago, I believe two weeks ago, my family was sick all week. We were all sick. We battled strep. We battled croup, fevers, all of them. But I'm going to tell you all one thing. Y'all see who's here today. The devil can't win. The Lord laid this on my mind. And I win. We need to put on the armor of God. Yes, sir. Because the devil's going to keep trying. Yes. I saw something that was kind of crazy. I'll tell you places. In Brazil, there was a blasphemous carnival. I didn't see too, too much of it, but it was very blasphemous, very diverse, mocking. Well, they said the day after that happened, it was torrential rain, um, rainfall. I think they got 24 inches of rain a day, floods. And ones that were being mocked, that were mocking and blasphemous were the devil sees what I'm not doing. The Lord sees what's going on. He's not going to leave us. He tries. And one thing I've always thought, when the devil sees something beautiful, he wants to attack it. All these families in here, y'all are here. He doesn't want that. But the Lord wants that for us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love everyone. I don't remember some of you guys' names. <laughs> Since I've been here, you guys have been a family. And I love everyone. The Lord laid it on my heart to remind y'all He's not going anywhere. He is with us. Amen. And I'm with Him. We are also with Him. Thank you. Anything else on your heart, Pastor Connor, we're going to close out our service, but I said some the Lord lays something on your heart, I want you to share. Bless your church. Let's pray over this service today. Father, I just pray that if, let me just say this, oh God. If we weren't fed by this service today, we didn't submit our hearts to you. We didn't open our hearts to you today. Because God, your spirit wasn't just present today, it was active. It was active amongst us. It was active amongst your church, oh God. Your spirit is active in the world today, but we are being so stubborn and giving into the norm of this world, and we are turning our backs on you. God, I pray that we will understand what your way is, that we understand what your will is for our life, and that we will follow it, we will follow you, and we will submit our hearts, and we will yield to you and your spirit. God, I just pray for your hand of protection over us as we go out to this world today. And I pray that we can use what we've received here today and we can use it to bring somebody else into the kingdom of God. In your loving name, I do pray. Amen.